Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man and welcome back to some more Youth Challenge. Welcome back guys to some more Youth Challenge, that's right we are back. And we are just about to go into January, which means those people that I was looking at on my shortlist and also the ones that I still need to go through in the scouting network there, I will be buying some new people. I think that the way to move this series forward is to bring people in from the outside and see whether or not that will actually change the way that the physical stats actually work. Players that I bring up, whether it matters after I've bought them in May or before I bought them in May, not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that the physical stats are going to go up if you buy them before May. I've proved that by, by, by getting a couple of people up and nothing seems to be happening with some of those physical stats. It has worked with a couple of people, but then again there's the people that I've got after May that the physical stats have gone up as well. So, who knows guys, hashtag change career mode, come on now FIFA, let's be sorting this out. Well guys, I've been through the people on the scouting list here and I've got two from Alexander Johansson who's currently scouting Portugal. I've got one from a guy scouting Netherlands and I've got three from scouting in Belgium. Only some of those that I'm interested in though, others I'm not so much interested in. So let's go and have a look at my shortlist now and see who I've got, where I've got. Um, and really? Why has he got no stats that have come up? Antonio Jesus Nutuncara. I have no idea. Oh, there's a few of them actually. Gabriel Lopez. Maybe they've gone up and I need to actually refresh that. So Gabriel Lopez was one of those ones that I'm definitely going to be signing. Um, uh, Elso Peters. I think uh, Ethan Mayambela was one of them as well. And who was the other one that I just added? I think it was Andrea Lopez Sanchez. Was it? No. No, Christian Pereira. That's the one. So Christian Pereira, uh, to be honest, I think he was better, wasn't he? Damn you, game. Why do you have to do this? Could I not have gone with my stats that I already have? Those are not going to have changed. They're only going to got, would have got better. You son of a bitch, game. Seriously. Um, okay, Gabriel Lopez is one that we was definitely going to go for. Unfortunately, we can't do anything just yet. So I think what I will do is I will go over to my shortlist and try to scout these people again. Or maybe not. I can't actually scout them because I don't have any available scouts. I'm going to have to buy another scout. Um, oh, God, no. It's not a five star. I need a five star. I'm going to take him off Netherlands, actually. It's the 1st of January, guys. It's time to start buying some players. But first and foremost, we've got a couple of things to have a look at. And that is, of course, the Youth Squad Monthly Report. Um, yeah, 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 whatever. Right. Let's have a look at the youth squad monthly report. Billy Brayford has now become uh, 16 years of age. Between 44 and 54 current overall. Between 68 and 84 is his top potential. Um, not great, I have to say. Not great. And he'll have to wait until May. Or at least hopefully he will wait until May. Cameron Barnes, between 79 and 94. He is going to be a fantastic goalkeeper. As long as he can wait till May. Now not only that, he's 6 foot 5. Wow, that is some reach right there. Jacob Armand person is not quite uh, 16 years of age yet, but he is 47, 53 overall and 79, 87 potential. Matt Moore, Mitsuharu between 66 and 82, he has dropped quite considerably, but we'll leave him till May anyway. He's five foot four. I really don't think he's going to get anywhere in this squad. Peter Ori R. Galvez is another guy who has dropped quite considerably between 45 and 49, and a, a potential between 72 and 80. Again, we can't do anything with these players anyway until May, and I'm not going to be promoting anybody else in the future now until it becomes May, unless they start pushing me and their potential is just massive. Well, first piece of business is Gabriel Lopez. We're going to have to go ahead and uh, inquire about Gabriel Lopez. We are scouting him, um, but I want to go out and, and, inqu and inquire about him and see how much he's actually worth because we really want him uh, as a player. Other than that... I can't remember out of these ones, like the Toon Cara and, uh, well, we already know about Gabriel Lopez, but Gabriel Montenegro was another one who I was looking at. I'm not quite sure if I was ever going to buy him, though. That was the difference, um, and I, I really don't know. But, hmm, interesting. Because, like I said, he's quite fast. The physicals are good. The stats themselves, ball control, dribbling, uh, crossing, they're not too bad. 
I'm just not entirely sure. I will go ahead and... Oh, I can approach to sign him. Apparently he's a free agent. Can't ask for more than that then. I'm going to go and just sign him up. So we're going to say he's going to be a squad rotation player. Um, it's going to leave us down on wage budget. I'm going to have to sort that out really quickly. Let me go and transfer some wage over. Oh, there we go. Plenty of money. <laughs> Plenty of money, guys. No need to worry about that. So let me go ahead. Also, Peters. No, it's not him, is it? It's Ethan Mayambela. Uh, an approach to sign him. Two grand, four years. Squad rotation player. And uh, that's all we can do at the moment. We've got a transfer offer in for Isaac Holmberg. Now, I don't remember... I've, I'm sure I took him off the loan list because he is one of the guys that will be playing quite often. So I'm going to go ahead and reject that anyway. Uh, that was the transfer offer. Now, what was the other one? Gabriel Lopez inquiry. 5.5 million for Gabriel Lopez, but we can try to get him for less. And get him for less, I am going to try to do that. 3 million is the offer that I'm going to put in. Ethan Mayambela has accepted his contract offer. We shall welcome him into the fold now. A nice young uh, left midfielder. Again, we don't really need a left midfielder, but sometimes when both Meyerstam and uh, Bradley Munns are playing, it's nice just to have a, another left mid that can slip in there because there's a couple of times I've actually been caught short. Now let's have a look at uh, Ethan. Look, like there, look, Meyerstam. Miatovic is what I was meant to say. When he's playing in that advanced role, I've only got Bradley Munns there, and if he's looking a bit worse for wear, I'm like, I need to have another left midfielder in there. So, Mayan Miller is actually rated 68. I don't think that's too bad for an 18-year-old. Acceleration looks fantastic. Sprint speed looks fantastic as well, and that's something that we don't have. If we look at that, six foot two as well. Jesus Christ, he looks like uh, an absolute beast on that left-hand side, and also fast as well. His dribbling's good. Um, what about his crossing? Where's his crossing gone? Because I'm pretty sure that was in the green. Uh, it's nearly in the green. 69. And 69 ball control as well. If we were to ever play a game, it's nice to have somebody with a bit of physical stats about them. And it's a game, guys. There is a game coming up. Everyone looks on form. And apart from Hewala, I think it's a full first strength side. Now, I do actually need to do a squad report before I do anything because, of course... That's what the difference... Uh, somebody's gone up. I can't remember who, but some people have gone up. Um... I think Tevez, Mitsuharu Chalmers on 76. I don't know who's gone up. But I'm just going to hover over these guys so you can see uh, who has got what stats. I think... Um, Sergio Rossi? No, he was always on 80. Pio Vicari was he's on 71 now. I think he was on 70 last time. So I think Pio Vicari might have gone up. Maya Stam on 69. I think he was always on 69. Harrison Reed's on 70 now. We already knew that before. Uh, Marlon Perkis, Dariqua. These are all out on loan. Pontus Jonsson, Ryan Murphy, and Samuel Olsen. So, guys, I think we're going to go with that team. That looks like a pretty decent team. Away against Blackburn, we are currently sat in third place. Of course, we had a really, really good run in the last, in the, the, uh, last episode. So, hopefully, we can carry that on into this episode. And we're going to get more strength in depth now as well uh, with a couple of people that are coming in. So, oh, it's 2-0. And AU has actually been injured in the 85th minute. He had to come off and be wheeled away but in an ambulance by the looks of things. That is not very good to see. And uh, we've also lost the three points to just really make that worse for ourselves. We dropped down to fifth place. Um, Blackburn are always a difficult place to, uh, to play. Transfer offer is unacceptable. 4.4 million they will accept. And I don't mind giving them 4.4 million for him because he looks like an absolute quality player. And I will submit that offer of 4.4 million. 18 years of age, he will probably take over where Caracciolo is. And, uh, you know, um, what was the other guy's name? I can't remember. Player's been injured. He's pulled his hamstring. He's out for three weeks. It's not as bad as what I was expecting, but it's still pretty bad. Oh, we got a monthly scouting update. Tom Jones, what have you found for me? There is a 91 in there, Marmaduke Duna. We're going to go ahead and sign him up. But other than that, we're going to reject you. And we're quick. No, 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 a fucking hell. Fucking hell. How am I meant to know what that says? Between 40 and 54 and a potential between 65 and 89. 89 still pretty high. You know what? We're going to sign him up. We're going to sign him. We've got plenty of money. We might as well sign him up. Wanyama. What have you managed to find for me? Absolutely nothing over in Japan, which is a shame. And Trapiccio. Ooh, there's a 92 in there. And it looks like a, a left winger. Oh, no, not another left winger. I was wanting a right one. Uh, Juan Insua, another left winger. Another 93 as well. Nice. Let's get him signed up. Other than that, everybody else looks like we can just forget about them. And uh, we can move on from there.
And that's the team that's going to be facing off against Huddersfield now, guys. We've got pr practically a full-on second-strength side. Mayan Bela is getting his first game for the club. Uh, Nicholas is back in as well. The only person who hasn't been subbed out is Shatov at the moment because we really haven't got another re decent right-back that we can replace him with. Frank Holm will be going as soon as I can get a replacement right mid. Uh, some guys have been saying, oh, sell Frank Holm, sell Frank Holm, sell Frank Holm. I can't. Until I've got another right midfielder, I am not selling Frank Holm. So, Reed is in at central, central defensive mid, and Thiessen is up front. Um, Rossi is back in goal for Hewilla. I think his name was Hewilla. I'm sure it was. Let me go ahead and simulate this match at home against Huddersfield. I'm going to auto-replace it because it was Watts' first. And I think... You know what? No, because I want to put him on the bench. Some people were mentioning, come on, Simovic actually scores some goals here. Why is he not on the bench? So, I should do that. And I really should. So, he is now... On the bench for you guys. And we're going to go ahead and simulate this game against Huddersfield. And hopefully grab uh, our first win of this episode. So Wimbledon versus Huddersfield. They've won, lost and drawn. So they've got one of everything in their last three games. But we are at home. We've got the, 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 uh, the plus. Ah, the thing is we had a second squad side. And Huddersfield managed to go away as winners. Uh, which is a shame. Uh, we're in the FA Cup third round though. Coming up against Plymouth Argyle. Yes. 4.4 million has been accepted, and now we can offer him a contract. Um, he's probably going to be an important first-team player. I say probably. I'm not entirely sure if he is going to be or not, but we're soon going to find out. I'm going to offer him that anyway. That's pretty cheap wages. I was expecting it to be more than that. He has declined it. He wants a bigger role in the squad, so we're going to have to give him a crucial first-team player if he wants to be... Uh, playing for us. To be honest, I don't. Th I think he's going to be a really solid player. Uh, you know, as he gets older. So I don't mind paying. I don't mind saying, look, you are going to be playing some games. We've got a home game against Plymouth Argyle. I'm going to have to go and sort the squad out a tiny bit, and uh, I'll be back. That's the team that's going to be facing off, guys, in the FA Cup against Plymouth Argyle. Uh, it's pretty, pretty much a first-team squad, apart from Pillbeam is in for a suspended um, shot of, And, uh, yeah, Harrison is in for the injured AU. Other than that, everything is pretty similar, guys. And we're going to go ahead and simulate this game uh, against Plymouth Argyle. A home game it is. So we should, fingers crossed, be through to the next round. We should be, on paper, we should be through to the next round. And we are quite con quite con comfortably. That was the word I was looking for. They've got the injury. We have a hat trick. So again, for two episodes in a row, I think it's Alan as well who has had two hat tricks now just this season. So he's turning out to be a really, really quality player as well. I'm glad that we bought him. So 3-0 in the FA Cup means we threw to the fourth round. And Gabriel Lopez has accepted his contract offer. It is the second signing and a big signing it is. 4.4 million um, from Malaga, was it? I think it was Malaga. Yeah, it was Malaga. So the new signing has arrived. What rated is he, though? He is rated 70. That is very good indeed. That is very good indeed. Let's take a look, closer look at his stats. Oh, wow. Look at those physical stats. Look at those physical stats. Apart from strength, he looks pretty all right. Acceleration, balance, jumping, agility, all those are in the green. Good stuff. Ball control is also in the green. He's 18 years old, so his skill attributes will improve. His short pass is 78, standing tackle 80. He looks like a pretty decent central defensive midfielder. And uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing what he does out on the pitch. Uh, it's 5 foot 11, maybe he could be a little bit taller, but other than that, he looks pretty alright. And his fucking weak foot's terrible, and he's got no skill moves whatsoever. Aha, we've got our final scout reports that have come through on the guys. Gabriel Montenegro, Garcia Ramos, and Jesus Tuncara. So now we can have a, a real good look at some of these players and see how they've improved over the time. Let's go to our shortlist because they're all in there at the moment. Uh, Tuncara is worth £375,000. He's not looking particularly fantastic. But then again, he was only always going to be a backup. However, Christian Pereira is looking slightly better. But we know his exact stats. That's the thing about Tuncara. We know what his stats exactly are. This guy is probably going to be, what, around 70 standing tackle, around 60-odd sliding tackle. Um, he's younger. He's slightly younger. But his sprint speed is going to be less, and some of his physicals are going to be less um, as well. Ooh, well, this is a... He's overall 66. We don't know what his overall is. So... Coming in at 66 is better than the other guy, I suppose. Hmm. 
I don't know if it's worth, guys, just scouting the rest of these and wait until the end of the season on making a decision about who to actually bring in and see. Because we've got Shatov, and Shatov's the top man. Unless we're going to buy somebody who's going to blow him out the water, which neither of these are, then uh, I think we can go ahead and scout report this guy. I'm going to ask him to scout him. Uh, Andrea Lopez Sanchez, we, it, we are in no need of a left back whatsoever. So I think asking to scout him is going to be absolutely fine. Fernando Garcia Ramos, 1.4 million central defensive midfielder, 72 rated. Wow, that is actually a lot less money than the other guy was. And apparently he's better in overall. So maybe we've dropped a boo-boo there, but he is 20 years of age. I think that in two seasons, the other guy is going to improve anyway. Um, the thing is, we don't need another central defensive midfielder. It'd be nice to get another one, but we don't need another one. We've got three now. We can really do a job in central defensive mid. Elso Peters, a central midfielder. We can go ahead and scout him. And Gabriel Montenegro is a 69-rated striker who looks like he might have a bit of acceleration about him. But other than that, I don't think we need him. I don't think we need him looking at that those stats. We've got Alan up here who is just, you know, is, is really, really good. And there's nobody that's going to knock him out of the team anytime soon. And don't forget, of course, we have the young, uh, where, where is he? T.S. in there on the bench as well. And it's our pretty much first team again, guys. Homburg is in. Lopez is in. And so is Shatov's back as well from that uh, suspension. Harrison is still in for the injured AU. But other than that, it's still our first team, guys, and we're looking we're looking pretty solid there. So we've got a game, I think it's away, away from home today against Bolton. That was it. Oh, my God, they're in fourth place. We're down in seventh now after a couple of losses. This could be our third loss in a row. However, Bolton are also on a little bit of a run of defeats there. They've got a draw and two losses to their name, but they've scored in every one of them. Not this one today, though. Harrison, unfortunately, our backup left back is now injured as well. So we've got Isaac Holmberg, who scored, and Allen, who scores his fourth goal in two games. And a 2-0 against Bolton brings us above Bolton and back into the playoff places. In fourth place on 47 points, two points behind Middlesbrough in second, and five points behind West Brom at the top of the table. AU is back from injury, so he slips in at left back. Uh, Harrison is slightly unfit after his injury last time. Other than that, Caracciolo is back in the squad. McGlashan is back in the squad. And it's our first team out there right now. And uh, it looks very, very strong indeed. For a championship side, we really do look uh, pretty, pretty solid. Pretty, pretty solid. A home game against Hull City to uh, maybe bring us into contention of automatic promotions. They haven't won in their last three games. Um, and I'm hoping that being at home with a full strength squad is going to be a plus for us. And it is. Bradley Munns and Allen getting his fifth goal in three games. What a player. And look at who we've got in the FA Cup round four. It is, of course, Middlesbrough, who we are fighting against promotion with as well. Um, that's going to be a very interesting, uh, very interesting game. So we've got the end of the transfer window coming up. We've not sold anybody. We've not bought anybody else. We've got a couple of players that we brought in just for squad depth reasons. But other than that, we don't really need to buy anybody at the moment. I think we're looking pretty, pretty solid. Oh, we've got uh, our scout report there on Elso Peters, a final one, and also a final one on Andrea Lopez Sanchez. Let's have a quick look at them. Why not? Let's have a quick look at them in the shortlist. So, Andrea Lopez Sanchez is actually listed for loan. Um, other than that, Elso Peters, 650,000 central midfielder, 69 rated at 19 years old. I think we've got better players than that coming through the ranks um, in current overall. Other than that, the physical stats of these players are much better because they come from somebody else's youth squad. So it's just like, ugh, it's really annoying. Christian Pereira is somebody I was looking at. Did I ever want it? Did I? Mm, did I ever put, send a scout out to him? I don't think I did. Let me send a scout out to him. I'm not sure why I didn't, I didn't do that. Rising up, back on the street. Took my time and took my chances. It's the 1st of February, means another month and another Youth Squad Monthly Report, guys. Oh, we've got a 17-year-old in there. I'm not sure if that's good or not. Billy Brayford between 74 and 88. Cameron Barnes between 82 and 94, looking like a very, very good goalkeeper coming up there. But he just needs to wait that tiny little bit until May, and then we will drag him up. Uh, Ernesto Carazzo 
between 68 and 88. Jacob Amon Person still 15 between 80 and 86. Juan Insua between 68 and 86. Mamadou Duna between 70 and 88. Matt Moore Mitsuharu between 68 and 80 has dropped again. And Peter Ori Argalvez is not even worth the time or the effort, I don't think. But we'll leave until May anyway. We'll see what happens. And Wake Gbdim. Oh my god, he's actually gone up. He's gone into the 90s now. And he is a right back as well. Pretty decent, pretty decent, but he is 15 years old, um, and I'm interested to see just how well he could actually end up. Time for a squad report, guys, and we should be able to see if somebody has improved. They have. Mitsuharu Chiyama's between, uh, has gone up four now to 77 in one season. What an amazing guy. Again, no physical stats have improved at all, even though he's 77 rated, his strength is still 68. I find it absolutely unbelievable that... EA allow these things to happen. Mies Miatovic has gone up another point, uh, so he's gone up three for the season to 76, and he's 17 years, uh, years uh, of age. He's, oh man, again, no physical stats have improved though. Tom Simovic uh, was a guy I'm pretty sure I got up before the May because I wanted to see if it worked. And as you can see, no physical improvements whatsoever. So I totally wasted my time with that guy. But he has gone up four for the season so far, up to 62. Colin Hernandez has gone up a point to 58, even though he hasn't played, or got any kind of improvements to himself whatsoever. I'm not sure how we've managed to do that, but uh, it probably sucked with somebody from EA off, and they've just decided to put an overall point on him there. Eric Agardius, uh, up three for the season, up to 61 now, 19 years of age. Still no greens in there, and I very much doubt he'll ever play for us, really. But uh, there you go. It'll be worth a bit more, I suppose. Theodore Nicholas has gone up 5 to 54. His physical attributes are going up, though. Again, works for some, doesn't work for others. I'm really not sure why. However, I hope that he becomes the player that it said it was going to become. Ben Harrison has gone up another couple of points to 66. Marlon Perkis has gone up another point again to 65. Pontus Jonsson has gone up another point. So that's five for the season for this guy. He was another one I brought up pre-May. And his stats have gone up. His physical stats. 83 for his strength is absolutely insane. And he looks like a really, really good central defensive midfielder. So interesting to see what becomes of him. Um, other than that, I don't think anybody else has improved. Isaac Holmberg says he wants to be picked and played for this game. And I usually let people who say that to me. I do. I want them to be wanting to play. So, as it stands, though, it's a full first strength side. Some of it's on the bench as well. Good, good. I think that Agadius can come off the bench, though. And uh, Lopez, who I think has actually improved a point, can go on the bench instead. Caracciolo on 72 there. I think he will be getting... Swapped out sometime soon, but I'm gonna go with that team. It's looking like a pretty strong so uh, squad to go up against Middlesbrough and this is probably gonna be the last game of this particular episode It's an away game in the FA Cup round four Can we manage to get through they've won their last three games as would be expected from a Peter uh, from a, a team that are angling for promotion But the FA Cup is a different kettle of fish and Tiesen comes off the bench to score Shatov getting sent off once again um, my god, I wish he'd control himself. But we are through to round five of the FA Cup. And I think we're going to go ahead and leave that episode there, guys. This has been episode 20 of my Youth Challenge. I really do hope that you guys are enjoying it so far. I am loving this. And I'm loving seeing what's happening. And I'm loving to see the, the people that are coming through. Not just from my youth squad, but other people's youth squads that are around Europe as well. And uh, Shape of Things without Pateok. We're doing quite well. Now, I actually want to see how... Um, Pateok is doing. I don't know if I can s see the exact stats of the squad, but I do like to see what he's up to. Manchester City up there in third place in the league. Ten points behind Chelsea, though, and four points behind Liverpool, who was sat in second place. Um, I can't see their stats really up until I get into the Premier League, and then I can start seeing his stats. I can see his overall and stuff like that as well, then. If I wanted to, I could just go ahead and scout him. I probably will do that, actually, any bit in between episodes. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you could leave a like and a comment, that would be amazing. You know, it would really, really just help me nowadays if you do leave a like and a comment. And until next time, I'll be the top man as always. Stay safe.